I'm going to explain the theory of the second best. I'm going to do this using five points here. First, I want to say what it is. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is just give some examples. The third thing I'll do is uh, to provide a formal solution here. The fourth thing will be to uh, discuss some of the solutions to the problem. And the fifth thing will just be a summing up. And that's the plan. Now, what is it? Well, the general problem is that if you want to maximize something, and lots of conditions that ha that have to be fulfilled in order for something to be maximized. Um, so you have many conditions. If one of those conditions is not fulfilled, then in general you should not try to fulfill all the other conditions. So that's that's a general theory. If one if you have a problem with one condition, you should not try to satisfy all the other conditions. That's kind of abstract. So let's give some examples. Uh, one example would be, should let's say you have a market economy here, a free market economy, and you have four conditions for the market economy to work. So you have perfect, you need perfect information. You also need um, perfect competition. And you need um, no public goods. And you need there to be no externalities. And if this is true, if you have all of those four conditions, if all of those are satisfied, then the free market economy will work perfectly well. Now, let's say one condition is not satisfied. Let's say you have an externality, and you can't avoid that. There's no way you can, you can't help it. There's an externality here, and you can't do anything about it. What should you do? Well, some people say, well, at least we should try to have competition and, and all the other things as well. I mean, maybe we can't do four for everything, but we, we will get the best thing we can do is at least to try to satisfy all the other three conditions here then. Well, the theory of the second best tells you no. Because let's say you have a firm that pollutes and it's a monopoly. So the pollution here, let's say that's number four and you have an externality and there's no way you can you can change that by assumption. Should we then try to deregulate the monopoly and create perfect competition here? So if you actually break up the monopoly, you can get more pollution. Uh, so, so okay, it's bad to have a monopoly because it will charge high prices. But, uh, but uh, if you break up the monopoly, you have more pollution, so then it's a choice. It's not necessarily good to break up the monopoly in this case. So that's one example of the theory of the second best. And you have to be aware of that, that you shouldn't always strive to satisfy all the other conditions when one condition is not satisfied here. The second example could be, um, let's say you want to create, uh, find the optimal tax or something because you have an externality and then let's assume it's possible to tax this. So you have X and there's a positive, no, so it's a negative externality associated with X. Ne negative externality. So we want to put a tax on it. Uh, and you try to calculate the optimal tax based on the size of the externality and things like that. But then you discover, well, X is related to something else. Y, another good. And Y has a, a positive externality. Okay. Now the problem is if I tax X, and if X and Y, if they're related, then the, the, the tax on X will affect the consumption of Y as well. And let's say they're complements. So if uh, you, you you consume less of X, you also consume less of Y. So if I put a tax tax on X, I will get less of X, which is good. But I will also get less of Y, which is bad. So in this case, I have to consider the relationship between X and Y before I, I put a tax on X. And you can say, why can't you just put a tax on X and a subsidy on Y and get the optimal point? Well, the assumption here is that there's something that's fixed that can't change. So there's one thing, let's say there's Y here, it's impossible to tax it, for example, or give a subsidy. So this this makes the problem of regulating things much more complicated. You have to consider not just the externality associated with X, but also how X is related to everything else, the strength of it, and how the strength of the externality associated with, with Y here in this case. So that's two examples of, of the general problem. If, if one condition is not satisfied, this changes everything else. Now we can do a more formal example of this. So the example I'm going to use is um, let's try to maximize a function. 
um, and you want to maximize a function f and let's say this is just composed of x1 and up to xn you want to maximize this this could be uh, x1 could be the number of, of goods you choose of x1 and number of goods you choose of x2 and things like that and you have a budget constraint for example just some kind of constraint a general constraint um, so in general that could be g of x1 equal to xn has to be equal to zero for example so you can't choose uh, a, you can't choose a bundle of goods that cost more than your budget for example um, but in general I mean you want to maximize a function subject to some kind of constraint and the general solution to that and we know that is that's quite easy you find uh, you find the first order conditions um, so in this case you would have a lot of first order conditions f for for the good one for example take the derivative with respect to i the first uh, first uh, x1 um, then you will have the lambda g take the derivative with respect to the first and that has to be equal to zero and you get lots of conditions like that you get n conditions like that for optimum uh, solution um, you can divide this by the um, one good so you will have f n f n equal to zero so in general then the solution will be f i divided by f n sorry this is g there is equal to g i divided by g n so this has to be true for the solution to be optimal so this is like uh, in general consumer theory when you have the marginal utility of good x divided by the marginal utility of good y has to be equal to the price of good x divided by price of good y for example so that's fine if that uh, if that is true then you have the optimal point and you can choose a bundle of goods that actually satisfy this uh, condition so let's now assume that um, one condition is not satisfied there's no way that we can satisfy all these conditions let's say there's an externality or something and there's no way we can change that by using a tax or a subsidy or anything you just have to accept there's an there's a, there's a constraint here that we can't handle in order to formalize that let's write down the constraint so we could say that in terms of this there's one condition here that is not satisfied so that would be the same as saying if let's say it's condition one it doesn't have to be could be whatever f1 divided by fn um, is equal to g1 divided by gn and that's what we would like it to be but it's impossible let's say it's a constraint so k and k is not equal to 1 so how can we handle that well then we have to write down the Lagrange function again and this time we have two constraints we have we're going to maximize this we have this constraint and we also have this constraint now so we write down the Lagrange function this time we will have something like this sorry so the Lagrange function would be something like this Lagrange. we're going to maximize this function subject to the first constraint and it's slightly different now because we don't have all the conditions there anymore but it's almost the same k times g and then we have the additional constraint this one so we're going to have this one which is f1 divided by with respect to n minus k with respect to the first good constraint n that's what we're trying to maximize and the first order condition of this one when I mean, the first order condition of the last problem was quite easy the first order problem, uh, condition here that would be a lot more difficult and complicated but we'll derive it and now we'll see what happens so take the derivative with respect to x1 and x2 and x3 and, s and so on and see what you get and you will get something like this um, with respect to good y for example take the respect to the derivative of the first function with respect to good y minus lambda take the derivative with respect to good y minus mu now it's going to get a little bit more complicated you have to take the derivative of this one 
So that's going to be derivative of f1 i multiply by fn, subtract the derivative of fn with respect to i times f1, divide that by fn square. Do the same thing with k. g1 derivative with respect to i, multiply by gn, subtract g n i g1 divided by g n square. You see, this is a lot more complicated now than what we used to have, right? So so the, the complication here is just this additional thing and it involves the cross derivatives and things like that. So so it's gonna be a lot more difficult to find the optimal point now. And that's the point. When you introduce an additional complication, it becomes a lot more complicated to find the right solution. So before we just used to be it used to be like that, and um, it was quite easy. Now it's a lot more complicated, and um, all the conditions will change. When just one condition here changes, you can see that all the other conditions will also change and becomes more complicated. And that's the point, or that's the the, the theory of the second best, that when one condition here in is is um, unavoidable, you have a constraint, then all the other conditions will will change and become a lot more complicated. Now some people will say, no, well, that's got to be, you know, this is impossible, there's got to be some kind of solution here. And there are some kind of solutions, um, so let's discuss them. The first solution would be to say that, uh, well, things are not as interrelated as you argued here. A lot of, you know, in the economy, that's, things could be more separable. And if they are, then this will be less severe. It's not a big problem then. The second thing is, people could say, well, maybe you do have this information. You have enough information to solve this here. Uh, or at least even if you don't know anything, you know that the f you know the first thing, you know that there's an externality, so there should be a tax. Uh, so people have tried to work on the theory that's third best. Um, and lastly, and this is what Lancaster uh, and Lipset did themselves, uh, in a later article, I said, well, the main lesson here is that you should not just base your your uh, regulation or the proposals on theory. You shouldn't say, oh, we need more competition here, or we need uh, attacks on the externality here. You should base it on empirical study and be careful. Um, so careful empirical studies of local uh, interventions. Empirical and careful. So these are three possible, uh, I wouldn't say solutions, but extensions or points of discussion. So in summary, then, what's the main message of the theory of the second best? Well, first of all, the main theory is that when one condition is not satisfied, you should not try in general to satisfy all the other conditions because they will change. To get to the maximum point, then you have to do something else. The second issue, I think, is that this shows us that in order to um, perform a uh, an optimal intervention, a good regulation, then you need a lot of information. Uh, for example, here you need uh, how is good X connected to good Y, and what is it now, and how is good Y connected to something else. So you need a lot of information to perform the good, uh, a good intervention. Thanks.